And welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here too, Miss Cologne. Um, Thank you. Does anyone Good have morning. a cloud drawing? Because we're talking about air quality awareness. Oh, Jackson, I see yours. I do have a screenshot of Evelyn's and Owen's that I can project onto the I top. have mine, but I can't find I it. I don't. You don't have I, to I had it on. Oh, I, don't know. Know. I have your Cameroon one. Okay. I don't even know. I'm it. looking for Rosie's right Oh, yeah, it's the one we didn't do. I have one from Rosie that says okay. Africa facts. Maybe it's. I don't even know what that is. If you guys are okay, I'm going to mute. But yeah, do that. We'll allow you guys to unmute yourself as you're answering questions. So for Mrs. Edmonds, I don't know if um, you would like the students to share what they did on their clouds now or after you present. Um, I'd love to see them now if that if that would be okay. All right, yeah. So let me share my screen with you and you can look at a few that I got ahead of time. Of course, now they're not there. Okay, pulling them up. <laughs> so Owen sent me this one. Can you see? Awesome. So Owen loves clean air um, because it helps him to stay healthy, to be able to breathe, and so that plants can breathe. And then Evelyn sent me one as well. Um, don't know why they disappeared, but <laughs> right in here is Evelyn. And she really went all out. <laughs> That's awesome. But, yeah, making it like three dimensional. So why she loves fresh air. Um, Dashiell, did you want to read these for us? One, fresh air and good for the environment. Two, poo, pollu <laughs> polluted air is not good for the environment. Um, fresh air is good for animals. Plants need fresh air. Yes, thanks, Dash. Yeah. And would anyone else, I know Jackson and Andrew, did they want to share why they love fresh air? If you would like to, um, you can unmute yourself. Maybe, Andrew, did you want to go first? Yes. People and animals, plants need, um, need, need, it. need, need fresh air. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, I love it. And then Jackson, did you want to tell us why you love clean air? Read your sentence. Jackson, read your sentence. So, uh, I like to play at, uh, outside. I want to play outside. Yeah, and it is helpful to have clean air when we play outside, which we will learn precisely about. <laughs> Thank you, Jackson. So now I'm going to share the screen with you guys so that Rosie's mom can teach us a little bit more about the quality of our air. So I'll make it nice and big. Everything look good? It looks great. Awesome. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you everybody for um, being a part of, letting me be a part of your classroom again. Um, I'm Rosie's mom and um, this is Air Quality Awareness Week, which is a part of my job at the Environmental Protection Agency. And we have this week every week, every year, and it's from uh, May 4th to May 8th this year, which so today is the last day of Air Quality Awareness Week. So um, the first question, 
that I had for, for folks, if they could um, maybe raise their hand or show Ms. Brown, um, what causes air pollution? What, what do we know about it? What do you guys already know about air pollution? Anybody have any ideas? Yes. Um, well, I, I know that air pollution is caused by, um, by that where, oh, hi, um, sorry, my cat. <laughs> um, I know air pollution is caused by when, uh, too much gas or harm, harmful gas or, um, too much, like, like plastic and um, everything gets into the air and then it makes it hard in some places to like see, even like see things. Like Jenny was talking about last week, how like there was a place in India where um, some, where some people due to air pollution couldn't see um, the Himalayas for like 34 years. So, like, it can just, air pollution's definitely something to be worried about. Yeah. Great. Thank I don't you. Want, they want to say worry. Hey, thank you so much, Dash. That's, that's really a great description. So, um, one of the things that EPA does, the Environmental Protection Agency, is that we protect public health and the environment. And air, air the quality of the air we breathe is so important. And um, if it's not good air quality, it can make us sick, especially for people who have illnesses like asthma. So we'll go to the next slide. And here is a picture of, um, of some of the, the Forces of air pollution, the reasons why, the things that make, put pollution into the air. And so you can see from this picture, there are trucks and cars, um, and uh, there's some factories that put um, air pollution into the air. Um, also, even natural things like volcanoes can put air pollution into the air. Um, forest fires can put air pollution into the air. And even something as funny as a cow burp can mm -hmm. cause air pollution. So all of this air pollution gets put up into the air and that's called being emitted. It's emitted into the air and it travels, air pollution can travel, some of it can travel really far, it can travel around the whole earth and sometimes it combines with other chemicals in the air and gets baked with the sunshine and then it can cause different air pollution. So it's a, once you put that air pollution in the air, a lot of um, health problems can result from that. And um, on the other side of this, this picture, you can see that um, some of those things that happen because of air pollution might be the air pollution goes up into the air and it causes a haze that goes out all around a city or even a, um, a smaller community. It can also um, go up into the air, travel a long distance, and then rain down into ponds and lakes. And that is called um, acid rain. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with acid rain and also with um, global climate change. So those are um, some of the main things that air pollution can cause. And they can even, um, some chemicals can get up into the highest parts of the air around the earth and can put a hole in the ozone layer, which is also a, another problem that air pollution can cause. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna talk about um, air pollution outside, and then I'm gonna talk about air pollution inside buildings and houses. So for um, outdoor air, as we were talking about and Jackson mentioned, some days the air is clean and it smells fresh and it's um, it's it's just a it just smells good. And what clean air is air that has no harmful pollutants in it, so no dirt or no chemicals. And clean air is really good for people to breathe. However, on a hot day, even here in Durham, especially if there's no wind, um, the air can feel heavy and it can smell bad and it can. Um, even make your chest feel tight or make you cough. So when too much dirt or too many chemicals get into the air, 
it's polluted and polluted air is not good for people to breathe. And let's look at the pictures that we've got on, this, on the screen here. And you can see that, um, who can tell me a, a couple of things about the clean air picture that are different about the dirty air picture? Can anybody do that? Everybody raising your hand. Do you have something, Alice, that you could say what's different about the pictures? So what's more cloudy about the dirty air? It definitely looks like there's a brown haze around those buildings, doesn't it? That's a city skyline. And air in cities can be dirty, but also places like the Grand Canyon or the Great Smokies National Park, they can also get air pollution blown in from other places that cause problems in those very special national parks. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how do you know when it's a clean air day and how about when the air is dirty. Well, this picture here is um, about air pollution monitors. And these are pictures of different kinds of air pollution monitors. Sometimes they collect information about how dirty or clean the air is every minute, like you can find out every minute. And sometimes they collect it only every six days, and then it's a different kind of monitor. And scientists and engineers use these special devices and equipment to monitor air pollution. And EPA has people who are very good at math and who are, who are called statisticians and also computer scientists as well as scientists and engineers to help understand the information that comes out of these monitors. And there are different kinds of monitors for different kinds of air pollution in different areas. And sometimes you might see these monitors next to a road or on top of a school. We have a lot of monitors that are on top of schools or even on top of a, a mountain. We have some kinds of air pollution monitors. And the state of North Carolina, the people who work for Governor Cooper, have an air pollution monitor on top of the Durham Armory, which is right across from the downtown YMCA. And that's collecting information about the air in Durham. And what do we, so the next question is, well, what do we do with that information from monitors? It's a lot of um, code, computer code and a lot of numbers. And we want people to quickly and easily be able to understand, is the air dirty or is it clean? And we want to find out ways to make that an easy for people to understand. And so let's look at the next slide. Uh, and this is called the Air Quality Index. And you can see this dial here, and it's got a lot of information on it. Um, who, can, who can tell me about the colors on this, this uh, dial here? Anybody tell me what colors they see? Uh, uh, green. I should be good. Green is good. Excellent. Good job, Jackson. And uh, if you, Jackson, if that, if you saw that little arrow pointing to the red, do you think that would be better or worse than the green? If it was that red, would it be better or worse? What's the yellow one? That what is a good, that's right. Yellow comes next. Do you think the yellow is better or worse than the green? Uh, it's not. Worse. It is worse. It's not so good. <laughs> yep. So it's so that is it's just like the stoplight colors. So green means good, yellow and orange yellow means caution, and orange definitely means caution. And then red means we need to take a minute to figure out what's going on here with the air quality. So if the if the dial is on green, it's good, good air, and it's a great day to be active outside. And if it's yellow, we call that moderate, which means for most people, it's totally fine to be outside. However, if you're unusually sensitive to air pollution, you might want to take it easy a little bit. And then it's orange. That's a day where people who, have, um, who are sensitive to air pollution, including children, should take a little bit of extra care. Um, and, that would, and also older folks need to pay attention on days when it's orange. And then if it's red, it is unhealthy. And everyone should take, take it a little easier, spend a little less time active outside, 
And also, if you can do your exercise, like if you jog or you run outside a lot, a lot of times if you have recess in the morning on days when the air quality is supposed to be red, that's better for your lungs. And then purple is very bad. And that doesn't happen very often in the United States, um, mostly in areas if they're having a forest fire and there's a lot of smoke. So um, this is called the Air Quality Index, and um, it uses colors and words and numbers to tell you about the air. So for our next slide, so, so you find out that it's orange day or it's red day. What, how, how do you if, you, if you know the air pollution is, levels are gonna be high today, what should you do? Well, playing outside is always okay. Um, you just need to take it easier and paying attention to symptoms like coughing or um, if it hurts when you take in a deep breath or you have chest tightness or you're wheezing, any of those things you need to pay attention and you probably need to stop playing and tell a teacher or a parent or another adult that you're not feeling great and that your lungs aren't feeling so good. So um, the next thing I would like to talk about is, so that's air pollution on the outside. And now let's talk about the air that's in our houses because we're all spending a lot of time in our houses. And um, I have a, a crazy number to um, talk about. It is um, how, what percentage of the time we Americans spend inside. Does anyone have a guess? Does anyone have a guess about what, how much time we spend inside? People think they spend 100% or 0%, somewhere in between. Alice? Do you have a guess? <laughs> or Andrea, do you have a guess how many hours a day we spend inside? Three. Three, that's a good guess, yeah. Owen? You wanna hold up with your fingers on what you think? <laughs> I think he's got four. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a lot. You have Alice, I think it's showing us like 10 or 12. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. 10, 12, 12 hours, no? 12. Okay, well, those are all excellent guesses. And what was surprising to me is that Americans spend 90% almost their whole day inside. And that would be when you're working at school or if you're um, in your house, especially right now, a lot of people are inside a lot of the time. Kids do spend a little bit more out time outside, but they also spend a lot of time inside. So we need to pay attention to how good is the air in our houses and in our schools as well. And so um, the reason why there's a picture of this fish on here is that he is Dusty the Asthma Goldfish. And the reason why he's, um, we have a fish associated with air pollution is because people who have a disease called asthma, they feel like when, there's a, when they're having an asthma attack, they feel like a fish out of water. So that's why we have Dusty the Asthma Goldfish. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about Dusty right now. And we're gonna talk about the things that make Dusty, um, maybe make his asthma worse or have more attacks. So let's go to this slide here. And the first thing is, so what is asthma? So does anybody know um, what asthma is or if anybody has a family member or a friend who has asthma? How many people? Oh, looks like I see some hands there. Yeah, it's a pretty big problem. So asthma is a, a serious illness and it's not the kind of thing that you, um, like you catch it. It's a part of your body and you can have it for your whole life. And there are lots of good medications to help with it, but it's a long-term serious problem. And it makes people's lungs um, tighten and constrict and they wheeze and they might be out of breath quickly. There might be some coughing, and that also um, that, it, that your lungs get irritated, and that is called inflammation. And inflammation can make people's lungs especially sensitive to some kinds of asthma triggers. So anything that's pollution related might make their asthma worse. And so, um, can we have a volunteer who can read 
um, what this that the fish what Dusty the fish is saying things that make asthma worse are called triggers and triggers can be inside your home or school. So does somebody want to read that list? Sure, go ahead. Things that make asthma worse are called triggers. Triggers can be inside your home and school. Yeah, go ahead and read. Is that all your asthma triggers? Dust, mites, mold, second hand, smoke, pet dander, cockroach, cockroaches, polar, pollen, cold air, response, respiratory infections, exercise, and others. Awesome. That was wonderful, Andrea. Thank you so much. And this is a, a pretty serious problem. Asthma is a pretty serious problem for kids, that one out of every 10 kids in, of school-age children suffer from asthma. So it, um, it can also cause a lot of problems that it's a big reason why kids miss school because they might have to go to the doctor. Sometimes they even have to go to the emergency room and they might um, be up during the night having trouble breathing. And so we, we, asthma is very serious um, for a lot of families. And so the next thing you can do is you can work with your doctor to create an asthma plan. And I'm wondering if I could have a volunteer to read what Dusty the fish is pointing, the goldfish is pointing to about what they can, you can do for an asthma plan. Go ahead, Hadley. Um, no and avoid tigers. Make medicines as directed. Oh, take medicines as directed. Um, know what your no, know what to do during an asthma attack. Um, keep emergency phone numbers handy. Great, thank you so much, Hadley. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of sense of some of the things inside our houses that can also make us sick. So we have to pay attention to them during Air Quality Awareness Week as well. So the next slide are things that we can do, because I asked Rosie, what do, you, what do you think that your class might be interested in learning about air quality? And she said, well, things we can do to make it better. And so I'm just gonna quickly go through some of these. One of them is you can um, ride your bike more, drive the car less. Um, you can also turn off uh, your computers and your lights to conserve energy because uh, power plants that burn coal are a big source of air pollution. And so the less energy we use, the less coal they have to burn to generate it. Um, we can also um, keep our temperatures a little warmer in the summer and a little cooler in the winter, just to use less energy. You can always reduce, reuse, and recycle because as Dashiell was talking about before, plastic to make plastics also produces air pollution. And so if we're able to reduce and reuse, we are making less of new plastics. Uh, you can use a water, wa refillable water bottle. And if you have a wood stove or a fireplace, don't burn anything but dry seasoned wood. Don't burn your wrapping paper, don't burn garbage, certainly don't buy, burn plastic. Don't put any of those things into your wood stove or fireplace. So that leads us to our last thing, which is um, my office put together a book called Why is Cocoa Orange? And the book is about Coco, who is a chameleon. And he, uh, or Coco uses the colors of the air quality awareness style that we talked about, the green, yellow, orange, red, and purple to help um, explain a little bit more about air pollution. So that is, thank you guys so much for being such a great audience. Oh, thank you so much for that amazing presentation. Round of applause for Rosie's mom, Mrs. Edmonds. And were there any questions or comments before we learn about Africa? I think, um, Mrs. Edmonds, the book, Why is Cocoa Orange? Is that the one that they're doing the read aloud for with YouTube? Yes. Awesome. So I'll send that in the weekly email to parents and I'll tag you, Miss Rainbow. 
Um, <laughs> anything else? Not seeing any hands. So let me show you guys what I have for you in terms of the order of presenters, just so you know where you are in the lineup. So thumbs up if you can see the names. Okay, so we have Hadley, Owen, Jackson, Andrew, Alice, Ashley, Dashiell, and Rosie that have done some awesome presentations on the countries of Africa. They um, studied, everyone got to pick their country of choice and learn a little bit about um, the language they speak and about landmarks that they might find or biomes. Um, so we will go through these one at a time. If you have something to present and your name was not on the list, then just type in the chat box and we'll make sure we include you. Um, and as always, you can take notes during the presentation so that if you have questions or comments like, wow, I loved this, you'll remember what it is that you wanted to say. So, I'm going to share my screen with you guys and pull up Hadley's. Can you see the screen, Hadley? Uh, yes. All right, well then take it away. Egypt by Hadley Cooley. Basic facts. Capital, Cairo. Language spoken, Arabic. Population, uh, 1,032,334,404. Um, 404. Pretty big population. Flag Egypt. Animals of Egypt, King Cobra, Nile Crocodile, Vultures, Dribbles, cam Camels, Phoenix Fox, and Jackal. Mm, Andrew taught us a little bit about alligators and crocodiles last week, that the crocodiles have the more narrow snout. How to talk in Arabic. These are really hard to pronounce. So hello is Mahaban. Goodbye is Wadan. Yes is Nayan. Uh, no is La. Good is Hassan. Bad is Saya. That's awesome. And I have some friends that taught me some Arabic. So they also taught me Marhaba. So if you guys are on mute, you can practice saying Marhaba, which is hi. <laughs> Fun and gross facts about Egypt. Ancient Egyptians, men, and women wore makeup. It helped protect their skin from sun. Egypt was one of the first civilizations to invent writing. Egyptian paper is called papyrus. papyrus. Um, in 1300s, people ground up mummies into powder and ate them to cure illness. When they made mummies, they put all of the person's organs inside of the hearts inside of jars except for the heart they believed it was the seat of the soul Whew. so if you guys also think that some of those facts were gross make a grossed out face <laughs> agreed famous egyptian landmarks the great sphinx the great pyramid of giza the white deserts valley of the kings what well Good job, Hadley. <laughs> we'll pause for Hadley. And raise your hand if you have a question or a comment. Special. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, Arabic uh, somewhat sounded like partial tongue to me. Mm hmm. Mm, I like it. Right. Well. Great job again, Hadley. I loved all your fun facts. And I'm going to show you guys Owens next. And I think I'll be reading for him. So Owen chose the Republic of Chad. Thumbs up if you can see. Okay, perfect. So here are some facts about Chad. The capital is Jomena, which I'm trying my best to pronounce. <laughs> the population is 14,739,485. The 
and the official languages are Arabic and French, but there are also over 200 languages spoken there. And to say hello, assalam alaikum. Animals, there are lots of animals found in Chad. Some of these are elephants, hippos, rhinos, leopards, cheetahs, giraffes, and lions. The West African lion is endangered. Special parks have been set up to protect the lions. And I love that you included that fact, Owen, since we've been learning about animals and conservation. Chad Lake is the sixth largest lake in the world. The country gets its name from this lake. For the biomes, where we have the habitats, which include all the flora and fauna, or plants and animals, we have the tropical biome and a subtropical grassland, and it's hot and dry. Fun fact, people of Chad are called Chadians. And that's the end of Owen's presentation. Did anybody have something they like to say about Owen's presentation? Like, oh, I liked how you used this picture, or I liked this fact. Andrea? Anyone in your family went to Chad before? Go ahead and type your answer in the box, Owen, if you would like. I like, for me, I like learning about the population of these different countries, and I always think about how does that compare to America, since we have 325 million. Some countries might have more, some might have less than us. Um, I'm not sure what Owen's answer might be. Oh. There it is. He says, no, he has not been to Chad before, but that's his dad's name. That's cool that you picked your country to study based on your dad's name. Anybody else questions or comments? Valerie. I like how you use the um, pictures for your best, for your presentation. Say that one more time, girl. I like the picture that you used for your presentation. Yes, thank you. That's a very nice comment, and I agree. <laughs> Can you say the greeting out loud again? Was it assalamu alaikum? Well, in Arabic, the standard would be assalamu alaikum, and we're going to learn about that in some of the other presentations, but I think um, with every country, they're going to modify it a tiny bit. Um, so this one was Asalam Aleiki. It's like almost the same. <laughs> I've used Asalam Alakum before, um, is the one I've been taught, but cool. That's awesome. I know it's always fun to learn just the little varieties. Yeah, I like to know those things. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have Jackson's presentation, and he also going to teach us about Egypt. So let's see what kind of facts, if we'll get some of the same or some different from Abby's. Okay, whenever you're ready, bud. All right, we're ready. Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. And go to the next screen. Thank you. The capital of Egypt is? Is? The population we found was 1,388,073. The language is spoken is Arabic is the official language, and they also speak English and French. And hello. Assalamu alaikum. Because hello. many of the people in Egypt are Muslim. Where are you? Hello. Is that's right. Oh, next page. It's a, <laughs> a major landmark in Egypt. The the what? The 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 pyramid. The I think 
fix a pizza. Right. And the Nile River is the my favorite, favorite is the things of, of Giza. Giza. I, I want to go on his head. head. That's right. <laughs> but that is that Nile River is the longest river in the world. So Africa has the longest river and it also has the sixth largest river in Chad. Right. Egypt biomes are fresh water and desert. I write that. I I tell her that. Yes, you did. Does the wildlife are camels, jackals, gazelles, crocodiles, and cobra? And your favorite is the what? Crocodile. That's right. All right. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. <sighs> Round of applause for Jackson. We're getting language applause. Love it. Any questions or comments for Jackson? Look at this. That's the greeting I was just talking about. Jackson had it in his presentation. Assalamu alaikum. That's yes. awesome. It came right around immediately. Um, my question was, um, why did you choose this uh, country? I couldn't hear that. What was that, babe? Um, why did he choose this country? Well, Jackson and Dad chose this country because of the pyramids. He wanted to look more at the pyramids. That's why. That is awesome. <laughs> and Jackson, I loved your um, homemade drawings that you put in your presentation. That was awesome. It added a great touch. All right, Andrew, are you ready to go next? She joined all the classes. All right, I'll share my screen. I cannot wait to learn about Tanzania. He wants to help. He wants me to help him read it. Is that okay? Totally fine. Tanzania. Tanzania. Very good. Tanzania. Capital. Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam. Do Dama. Do Dama. The population is fifty eight million. The population is fifty eight million. Size is two times. The size of two times size of California. I just have to finish I just have to finish the presentation. Famous landmarks to the man Jaro. Flag of Tanzania. Okay, so biomine. Biomine. Savanna. Biomine. Biomine. Yeah, I don't know. Just, just say grass. Grass, red, oats. Sawgrass. Sawgrass. Lemongrass and other shrubs. The grass in the those go high. Not many trees are and and the old rainfall. Wow, great job. And I like how you included some of the names of the types of grass. That's awesome. So that we can learn about the grassland biome. Um animals that you will find in world of beasts. In, in, endangered species, the black rhino, the des what is desperate shrew, the desperate shrew, flying fox, the flying fox, forest animal. I don't just say forest animal. It says Abbott's 
Dunker. Abbott, Dunkel, Forest, Antelope. And then um, Arondo Dwarf Gallo. Then uh, Arondo Dwarf Gallo. It was kind of like a little small, little gerbil mice. No, mouse. And, and the desperate shoe is a rat. It's like a little rat or a little mouse. And so one. fun. Makes me want to look up their pictures later. Being protected. Being protected by using technology colors to track these earth roaming the program's earth ranger program that they earth use ranger, ranger program. so cool it reminds me at the zoo how they were tracking the gopher frogs too um fun facts about tanzania the home to the coconut crab the largest crab in the world yeah. and we don't know how to say this. Um, Odavi Gorge, Odavi Gorge. Odavi Gorge um, in, is the site, site uh, in Transnia that holds the earliest evidence of the human existence. Of the human existence of human ancestors. ancestors. Wow, that's amazing. Things, learned. things I learned about Tanzania. It is the largest continent country country in at East Africa. There are about 112 African tribal groups. Living. Tribal group living there. Arranged marriage. Arranged marriage is still customary. It's still customary. Many families. Soccer is the favorite sport. The nation of Tanzania. The nation of Tanzania was found. Was formed. Was formed in 1964. And large producer. And largest and largest producer of clothes. Good job. Why are they playing? Wow, that was an amazing presentation, Andrew. I know how they use a coconut for soccer. <laughs> And they use coconut and soccer balls. Comments or questions for Andrew? Miss Rainbow. I'm just saying, a coconut for a soccer ball sounds really fun until you get a bruised foot. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and, and they don't wear shoes when they play soccer. Yeah. Ow! Coconuts wow. are hard. <laughs> you just play, Crazy. pick up a game anywhere. It's cool to oh, have it possible. I hope they don't do head. I hope they don't head the ball. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Miss Spots. Learning about the coconut crab was very fun. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Um, great job, Andrew. So we still have Alice, Ashley, Dashiell, and Rosie, which is real quick. We'll do one little dance break so let's see um miss cologne <laughs> would you pick a number for us okay i like number five please right. you get the do si do dance break so if you're with your family and you have somebody yeah my imaginary casper <laughs> or you can just turn around by yourself <laughs> great job thank you miss cologne <laughs> Miss Rainbow, would you like to pick a number? <laughs> Three. Oh, this is my favorite that she picked. I love this little cowboy. <laughs> so, do your little dance. <laughs> Great job, guys. <laughs> Always good to get moving, especially if we've been sitting for a while. So I will get Alice's presentation ready, although she might have gone somewhere dancing. There she is. <laughs> All right, so let's share our screen. Alice learned about Sudan, and she has an awesome presentation to share with us. So, make this nice and big. And Miss Alice, are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> Would you like me to read, you to read, or we'll both read? Me reading. All right, can you read the title for us? Things About Sudan by Alice. It's supposed to say, Mom. 
<laughs> Adult cartoon population 43 million. Slightly bigger than one fourth the size of the U.S. Tropical in the south and desert in the north. They speak Arabic. Amazing thing. Then it's very dangerous because there is a war there. Ma what is it, Mama? Marhaban is hello in Arabic. The Nubian pyramids are a landmark in Sudan. There are animals in Sudan that are nowhere else in the world. That are nowhere else in the world. Darver gerbil, gerbil air thicket rat, gum a bear trees are used to make gummy bears. Goodness for Sudan that they can help make gummy bears. <laughs> And this is the tree that makes gummy bears. That is amazing. Great job, Alice. <laughs> Round of applause for Alice. <laughs> Does anyone have questions or comments? No, I love that tree too, Miss Bats. Hmm? What's that? You want some gummy bears? Mm -hmm, me too. Mm -hmm. Andrea? Mm -hmm. Um, so, if you would love there, would you like it? Yeah, I would like it, but I don't know how to speak it. Good point, Alice. You'd have to learn some Arabic, I guess. <laughs> Mom, can you give me my bear? Mm, any other questions or comments, Alice? All right. Thank you so much for teaching us about Sudan, Alice. And last for me sharing my screen would be Ashley. So Ashley, thumbs up if you're ready. Okay. Um, I'll just pull up your pictures and then let you read. Give me one second. Okay, so here's the picture. And I'll share my screen. I love technology because I had this earlier, but then it disappeared. Okay. <clears throat> Ashley, can you see the screen? Yes. All right, go ahead. Facts. Egypt. A country linking Northeast Africa with the Middle East dates to the time of pharaohs. Capital. Kaido. Official language, modern standard Arabic. History. The historical records of ancient Egypt began um, with, um, with Egypt as a... Um, Unified state, which occurred um sometime around um um three thousand one hundred and fifty BC. Um, Great handwriting that you're using too. And did you have something I think about the animals of Egypt? Uh huh. Egypt animals, camel, um, caracal, panic fox, and dorcas gazelle. Fun fact about a camel, they can survive without water 10 months. I like how you had the fennec fox in your presentation and so did Hadley. And then you included a fun fact about the camel. Applause for Ashley and her awesome handwriting. I like seeing all the different kinds of presentations. Sometimes Google, sometimes posters. So great job. Any questions or comments for Ashley? 
Maybe you could ask her something like, would you ever visit Egypt one day? If you would live in Egypt, how would it look like for your life? Can you repeat that again? I couldn't hear. If you would live in Egypt, what would it look like for your eyes? Mm, I don't know because I don't want to live in Egypt. I just like Egypt because of the pyramids. True. Asha, do you like the sand when you go to the beach and stuff like that? Yes, but not when it's cold. Yeah. And probably if we lived in Egypt, we might start to get a little tired of the sand everywhere and making our things so dirty. <laughs> Great job, Ashley. All right, Miss Rainbow, do you feel okay yeah. sharing your screen for Dashiell's presentation? <laughs> My internet has gone in and out today, so let's hope that it's going to work. Let's give it a go. Okay, here it is. Okay, um, Cameroons, I guess by me. And then in this slideshow, I put a bunch of words in bold, and I looked all of those up on Merriam-Webster's, which was took me some time. So, um, and they'll be in the back of the slideshow along with their meaning. So, the official name is the Republic of Cameroon. The form of government, notice in bold, is Republic. The capital. I I spent like ten some. A good amount of time trying to figure out how to say this, but I never could. Um, yeah, on day or something. But the population is 2,500,000? Mm, something like that. But point is, population's a lot. Um, the currency is the Central African franc, CFA franc. Uh, the area um, is 100 and, no, 183,568 square miles. Um, oh, okay. oh, my bad, 25 million. Thank you, Ms. Boss. Um, uh, the major mountain ranges, should have said, major mountains, um, but Mount Cameroon. The um, Cameroon is rich in geograph geog geographical and cultural diversity. It's one of the wettest places and countries on, on Earth, so you get a lot of rain there. It's kind of funny. It's like one continent, and then there's like Egypt where you get like no rain, and then there's Cameroon, which is like the wettest place on Earth really weird. And then Wazan, na oh yeah, um, about 230 spoken languages on top of French and English. I, they said I have to say how to say hello, and thankfully for me, my sister knows French, so hello is bonjour. You're welcome. Wazan National Park is a very popular destination. Some of the most fertile land in the world is, can is in Cameroon. Hmm, I wonder why. Um, it is known for bananas, cotton, oil seeds, cocoa, and coffee. Landmarks. Cameroon on the Gulf of Guinea is a Central African country of very terrain and wildlife. It's inland capital, Yewande, <laughs> and its biggest city, the seaport, Douala, are transit points to ecotourism sites as well as ecotourism uh, beach resorts like Freebie near the Chutes de la Lobe waterfalls, which pl plunge directly into the sea, where the Limbe Wildlife Center houses rescued primates. Um, famous people, if anybody really likes basketball, then um, they probably have heard of Joel Embiid, who plays in the NBA. 
um, on the Sixers, 76ers. Um, he was born March 16th, 1994, and he's a basketball player, as I said. Um, Paul Baya, who was the first president of Cameroon, he was born in February, February, really long time ago, 1933. Mongo Betty June, who's an author, was born, forgot to list the, the um, month, but I know it's January um, 30th, 1932. Um, Alex, Alex Song birth date, um, September 9th, 1987. Has anybody heard of Alex Song? She's a famous woman soccer player, but yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, Cameroon can be described as landforms. Cameroon can be described as Africa in miniature because it exhibits all the major geographic features of the continent. Mountains, desert, rainforest, savanna grassland, and ocean coastland. Cameroon's coastal plain extends inland from the Gulf of Guinea part of the Atlantic Ocean to the edge of a plateau. Yes. Um, here's the glossary, which I looked up. So a government is the body of persons that um, constitutes the governing authority of a political unit or organize, organization, organization, I don't know. Um, currency, something such as coins, treasury notes, and bank notes that is in circulation as a medium of exchange. Cultural diversity, the existence of, of a variety of cultural or ethnic groups within a society. Gulf, which is not to be confused with gulf, is a part of an ocean sea, extend, or sea extending into the land. Primate, a primate is a eutherian mammal consisting taxonomic order primate primates plateau an area of relatively high ground one thing about the primates turns out a primate is some sort of pope too so they came up with a bunch of pictures of popes and i'm like what yeah um and then there's still the bibliography um obviously merriam webster's i used wikipedia i used Duxter's. I use National Geographic Kids, and special thanks to my sister, who I know is not watching, but uh, Ella for looking over my shoulder literally the whole time I made the slideshow and correcting all of my mistakes. And is there one more slide? Oh, yes. Thank you for taking your time and energy staring at this 10 slide slideshow. You're all appreciated. Also, I need to go now. <laughs> that was uh, amazing. Oh, does anybody have any questions before I go? Hmm. Why did you pick Cameroon? Oh, because my friend, um, my friend Doran, his, um, his mom is an English teacher, and um, they took care of a um, high school, one of their students from Cameroon. And he was really nice to me, so I did this as a tribute to him. That's super fun. And thanks so much. And if you got to go, have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Andrew, did you have something, bud? Dad, yeah, yeah, my sister wanted me to ask Dad for that. Would he want to live in Conzonia? Cameroon? Cameroon. <laughs> yeah. Well, next time, because I'll see first grade on Wednesday, so I'll ask Dashiell and then we'll talk about it when I see you Wednesday. And we'll <laughs> okay, last but not least, we have Rosie, if Miss Rainbow will share her screen. Miss Brown, just want to make sure you got my message. Andrea has one as well. If there's oh. Okay, and hers actually is the same as Dashiell's country, so. Oh, do we want to do hers first? Good, yeah, she's ready. Yeah. I mean, just because it's Cameroon? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Andrea. Thank you about that. I'm not sure if I missed that. In Sorry, Rosie. Here she is. Let's do it. I can pull it up here one second. Let me share our screen. You see it? Mm hmm Okay. Go for it, Andrea. Come on. Yeah, 
Good luck. May 8, 2020. Country details. Capital, Yuan Day. Population, 25 million. Language. Main, the main languages are English and French. Local languages are, are pidgin and full full day. Full, full day. 20, over 25, I mean, over 250 languages. Fun fact, the name Cameroon comes from the Porto, Portuguese. Portuguese word Cameroon, mm -hmm. which means shrimp. The first European to arrive in Cameroon found lots of shrimp and called the country Cameroon. Fun fact two, my dad lived in Cameroon. Did you show these things? And I have a couple things that are my dad's that are from Cameroon. This is something that's from Cameroon. This is a special hunting knife. This is a picture of, this is my dad. And this is the family he lived with in Cameroon. And also, these are Cameroon pants. So. Next one. Cameroon has 10 regions. Northwest and Southwest regions speak English. All others speak French. Each region has many local languages. Say hello and languages of Cameroon. Hello, English, bonjour, French. And my dad will say this one because I have no idea how to say it. This one is Jamwali, which actually means like peaceful night, but it means like good morning. Full, full, and that's full, full day. So. Other fact, they grow coffee, cocoa, cotton, rubber, bananas, and many other things. The country is very, Biodiverse, the deserts, volcanoes, rainforest, beach, and more. Its bird is ostrich, and many more. So, yeah. Its flower is red stinkwood. Favorite sport is soccer. Bi biodiversity, there's grasslands, beaches, rainforests, and dry climates. Say yes, so that means goodbye. Amazing job! <laughs> Round of applause for Andrea, and thanks for sharing your screen. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, I'm sure you guys must have some questions and comments on that. That was so cool. Um, Rosie, go ahead. Um, I saw this in Ms. Box's chat, but um, why why did um why did your dad live there? Oh, he lived there for his like school. So yeah, he lived there for his school. Yeah. And he visited that family. During college, and then I went back to do some more research there. And do you still wear those pants all the time? Because they're the best pants I've ever mm -hmm. seen. Yeah. They're, I love them. They're called, they're called, uh, it's cool, they, they're called the uh, Cherche des Mots, which means like cross, uh, crossword puzzle. So it's called like a, like patchwork pants, but they call them crossword pants. I, actually really want a pair really badly that's awesome <laughs> work on that uh, will you um can you type the way that can you type the title of that i can't even pronounce that word you just said mo i'm gonna look them up <laughs> now do you know a lot of full full day then mr gordon 
I know. Yeah, when we were there, we spent a big focus was on learning language. So one interesting thing about the full day language is when you say hello, you don't just say hello, you say, hi, how are you? And then they respond. And then you say, how's the weather? And they respond. And then you say, how's your mother? And they respond. And it's about a 60 second, sometimes several minute process where you kind of ask about, and it all happens very fast. You ask about all, all the different parts of their, of how they're doing. Wow. Andrew, did you have something? I love that culture. My sister wanted to ask Andrea this. Like, why did she pick this <laughs> country? They just said it. She just said it because it's, her dad lived there. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> oh, my question would be, when you were there, did you get to see the red stink wood? And is it smelly? Is that why they named it that? I didn't. I did not. That, that was actually one we just learned from, from ducks. Well, yesterday I asked what ducksters is, and today mm -hmm. we hung out on ducksters, which was cool. So I did not know that was that was the flower, but it probably it probably does. I don't know. That's what they <laughs> That's call. So it. fine. Yeah, we'll have to look that up later. But thank you so much. And my dad saw a lot of ostriches when he was there. Yeah, there are a lot of wild ostriches. It's true. Wow. Well, it certainly inspires me in the future to try to travel more because that sounds like an awesome experience. I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> well, when I, when I, when I was, went there, there were no cell phones. There was a little bit of email. So when I left, I couldn't really even communicate with my family I'd live with only by letters. And now we have Facebook Live and FaceTime so I can call them right now and say hello so it's kind of amazing how technology changes our relationship to these places that's so awesome yeah mm -hmm. all right now this time i mean it that rosie last but not least is going to present her country okay one moment okay zimbabwe by rosie Edmonds or me. <laughs> capital. The capital of Zimbabwe is Harar. Harar <laughs> became the capital in 1980 when Zimbabwe was first a country. People had lived there thousands of years, thousands of years before, but Zimbabwe was not yet a country. Languages. In Zimbabwe, people mainly speak Shona, and and English. Mm. Greetings. Makadi, how are you? Mangwa Nani, good morning. Muskati, good afternoon. Ma Neru, good evening. Ma Square Ase, how is your day been? Population. In Zimbabwe, as of 2018, there are over 14 million people. In 1960, almost all of everyone were living in rural areas. At the moment, people are starting to live in cities, but still more than half of people live in rural areas. Biomes. At the moment, there are only three biomes. They are savanna, grassland, and forest. This is an acacia tree. Landmarks. One of the most well-known landmarks is the Victoria Falls. It is a huge waterfall and it sits on the southern side of Zimbabwe. Victoria Falls is twice the height of Niagara Falls and half a kilometer, kilometer wider. Ooh, wow. Still landmarks. One of the last known landmarks are, are Matobo Hills. They're a bunch of rocks in a formation, so a rock formation. It is also a national park, and though it is not as well known, it is still very cool. Uh -huh. Animals of Zimbabwe. The animal I picked is also the national animal, as you may have remembered it, is the sable antelope from the my animal um, poster. For my endangered animal, I picked the black rhino. I felt so bad for these rhinos and all rhinos in general. There are only 375 in Zimbabwe. 
So over here, um, you can see the sable antelope is on the far left in the corner. Um, black rhinos are at the top corner. And um, at the bottom, it has um, how many like African uh, rhinos were killed. But um, so you can see in 2018, it's starting to drop. It's still quite made a lot. How can you help? You can help by supporting WWF World Wildlife Fund. They help move rhinos in national parks and reserves where they are protected. Food. In Zimbabwe, the national food is sadza. It is a corn-based dish and sadza is usually prepared with meat and vegetables. It is quite common to hear Zimbos. Zimbos is what the website said, but I like Zimbabweans better, saying sadza goes down well if only eaten using fingers and not a fork and a knife. I got this quote from tambourite.com. Fun fact, I thought it was really cool that some people help rhinos. They took them in helicopters. I saw one of the pictures and my dad thought it was really cool. Bibliography. I did not use many sites, but I did use Dexter's, Google, and Tambourai. Tambourai was the site I saw the fun, the, where I, okay, sorry, spelled that wrong. Sorry. The food quote on. Goodbye. Good job, Robbie. Oh my goodness, amazing facts that you included. Yeah. I want to see a rhinoceros in a helicopter. That's crazy sounding. I can't even wrap my brain around what a rhinoceros in a helicopter would be like. Yeah, my dad. Yeah, that is an interesting one. You what, Rosie? My dad wanted to put a picture in, but, you know, I didn't. I'm with your dad, I'm just saying. <laughs> Any other questions or comments for Rosie? Hmm. Rosie, um, was there any reason why you picked Zimbabwe? Um, well, I used to, it was, I used to think that um, the Prince Ali song um, from Aladdin was Prince Ali, Fabulous He from Zimbabwe. So I just thought it was funny to do that. I love that. <laughs> Such a fun reason. Well, thanks everyone for sticking around. I know we went a little longer than normal, but I just had the best time with you guys today. Thank you so much for sharing all that you learned. Uh, before we head out of here, if you want.